Welcome back, I am Dr. Ruckus, and today we are playing Bant's Urza Artifact Aggro in Ranked Standard. This deck is built around Urza Prince of Krug, a 4-mana 2-3 legendary creature. Artifact creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2. That's right, it's not just a plus 1, plus 1 lord, it's a plus 2, plus 2 lord, which makes your squad hit really hard on turn 4. It also has a second ability, you can pay 6, create a token that's a copy of a target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 one -one soldier creature in addition to its other types. Goal of this deck is basically just to curve out 1, 2, 3, 4, drop Urza, and slam in for a ton of damage. Towards that end, we are running 8 1 drops, 4 Teedling Wormlets, which pairs well really with all of the artifacts in the deck, as well as the Ocean Frontliner. Um, you could also go with the 1 mana 2 1 White Fox artifact creature, but I chose to go with the Frontliner. It pairs a little bit better with the Wormlet because whenever an artifact enters a battlefield, including, including the Frontliner, you do get a plus 1 counter here, so you can get a little more value off that. It does not pair as well with the Automaton because you only get the plus 1 counter on the Automaton when you cast an artifact spell, whereas this is just being unearthed from the graveyard. Two drops are running the Surge Engine, which is a pretty sweet attacker installed out board states. Um, this can become unblockable and just swing through for damage every turn. And since you are going to be pumping your entire squad with Urza, it is very reasonable you get a board state that is big and chunky and your opponent does not want to attack through, and you can just sneak through damage with the Surge Engine for the rest of the game. A little split between the Assembler and the Amalgam, and the 3-drop slot is where all the best cards are really sitting. The Smalcrum is just a great 3-drop. Pump the entire, well, pump one of your creatures with plus 1, plus 1 counters. Steel Seraph often give flying to swing for victory or lifelink when you need it. And the Combat Thresher is a 1 1 double striker that draws you a card, but later could be a 3 3 double striker, uh, either by paying 7 or by giving it the plus 2 plus 2. These three options are all pretty good copies because uh, the Simeon comes in again if you copy, copy it with uh, the Prince. Distribute some plus one counters. Steel Seraph gives you another creature then that can grant flying to someone else, and the Thresher comes in and gives you a card. So, pretty sweet deck. Enjoy the gameplay. Let's dive right in. Definitely a little bit awkward. You can at least go frontliner on one. And hopefully hit one more land. In the next couple turns, drop the Simeon. Plaza of Heroes. Legendary creatures. Nice. We do hit the land. Okay. Um let's have a thing of death touch. I guess so. Alright, we're happy to trade here if you wanna give it to us. Alright, no trades. Get the wormlet down. Thalia comes down. Okay. Hit the third land. We drop the Simeon. Where do we want to put the counters? We want to go Urza next turn. 2-2 two -two runs into Thalia. Also runs into the Death Toucher. We'll put it on the Frontliner and get in there. They probably don't really want to block that. Okay. Could even get in with the Wormlet as well. Alright. Pair of 3-3s three coming through. They trade off with the Frontliner. Pretty interesting. Okay. Well, we can cast that back on turn 5. Probably still going to go Urza this turn. Adeline. Okay. A little bit beefy. And they attack. No blocks from us. Back of Wormlets. I think we still go Urza this turn. Can attack with a 4 3 Simeon. Other options go Wormlet plus Frontliner. I think we wait for that. Okay, let's send you in there. See if they want to trade. They do. That's okay with us. We get one more land. We can also go Wormlet plus. Um, Flashback the Smalcrum. Unearth the Smalcrum. I just call every return from the graveyard effect flashback, even though it's not. Do nothing. We hit the lands. Pretty good. What do you think? Wormlet, Simeon? I think I'm down for that. Ooh, bottlenecked on green. My bad. Okay, that's still fine. I think I'd still make that same play. Here comes the frontliner. Unearthed as a 3-3. We could see an Aganjo here, uh, which is fine. We don't need to throw Urza under the bus. We can always replay it, but um, I prefer not to get it aganjo here. That should make for some awkward blocks. Okay, they choose to trade there. This is fine. Oops. Okay. Well, what else you got? They did nothing with three mana that turn cycle. Ao of the Dawn Sky. 
Double Striker hits really hard. What do you come in as? You'll be a 4-3. I think we still cast you. Get the counters. I think we put it here. Yeah, we'll put it here so that everyone can get in there. At least do this. Let's see. If they chose to block here, they would they would uh die. So they can't block the prince, so we can get in there for free, I think. Take that trade and take 10, drop to one. Alright. Let's see what they get off the AO. Wandering Emperor would kind of suck. But if they exile or kill the Urza, we do have backup Urza on the way. Urza resurrected, okay. And let's see. They destroy the Wormlet, not the Urza. Surge engine. Put it down to one. Shouldered, okay. They can start gaining life now. I think we're prioritizing the surge engine becoming unblockable. So I think we just want to do this and hold mana to level it up. That's pretty inefficient though. We can always level it up the next turn. We start with a thresher here. See what we draw. Rumble looks good, but we'll still drop the unblockable search engine. Seems like a reasonable path to victory. Gix. It's interesting. I don't think it really helps them, though. They need an answer to the search engine or they lose. Okay. So we definitely level up the surge engine. Is there anything else worth doing? I don't think so. I think we attack next. We could draw into a ganja with a thresher. I think let's just start here. And make him have it. Play the simian. Make the thresher really obnoxious to deal with. It doesn't even trade with shouldered then. Okay. If we're going to do that. We can play out the wormlet first, I guess. Play the simian. Yeah, I think we're putting it on the Thresher. Unblockable. 5-5 five, five Double Striker. They chump there. They have a Ganjo or removal. Maybe they don't realize it's unblockable. Okay. <laughs> a lot of flitting back and forth. I think they just didn't realize it was unblockable. I mean, we don't have white. So, I think we have to mull this. Okay. A little bit better. We can keep this. We don't have double white. So maybe put back the Steel Seraph. I guess that's fine for now. Tap land. Okay. Two drop works for me. One on human. Maybe five color humans. Denic Apprentice. Okay. I think we drop the Surge Engine here. I guess we bounce. Do we want to let them bounce? I think I prefer not to trade. Let's see if they want to bounce with us instead. They offer the bounce. Are they going to pump this thing? I don't think so. I think we take the bounce, right? I guess they could um, a ganjo here. But if they want a ganjo, do I care? I don't think so. Alright, no a ganjo that turn. Shana. That's a problem. I really do not like that. So I think we drop the Simeon, I guess. It'd be nice if we go Thresher into Simeon. But I think we need a big enough creature to discourage attacking into this. Okay. So no more free attacks for you. They play Thalia. That's okay. They didn't gain any life. So that's good. Surge engine being unblockable is pretty nice. Uh, we want to leave blue open here. We'll play out the Foundry, so it could be available later. Don't think we're attacking. And we'll plan to level up the Surge Engine and start getting in through um, some unblockable damage. Okay, that's pretty annoying. Alright. Lever you up, cannot be blocked. More land for us. Well, we don't have to play the Thrasher. Three mana makes it a 5-4. It's pretty good. Is that better than playing out of 1-1? Maybe. 
I mean, we're okay blocking for now. Can also turn you into a 15-15, uh, but I think we're good just holding back here for now. And six mana to do the next step. Okay. Attack for five unblockable damage. And we're just waiting for them to have an answer to the Amalgam. If they attacked, I might not block here. Uh-oh. That's not good. Interesting. That gives them some reach in the deck. They create a copy of Radadravik. And then what? Okay. So now they have multiple of these. And they draw a card. So I don't know that we block this, because if they do have a Ganjo, they pick off our only blocker. So I think we probably let this through and give them the draw one. They don't think it's worth throwing the Amalgam under the bus. So no blocks. What we can do is turn the Amalgam into a 15-15 or whatever, and then no amount of a Ganjo will get through. But this is awkward. We're now kind of just waiting until they hit uh, Jota, which is a serious issue. Yeah, this isn't looking amazing. That's interesting. Does that make you big enough to survive? Um, maybe we cast you instead this turn? Then we can probably survive most Aganjos. Okay, unblockable again. Attack for seven. All right, let's see all these copies. Another thing we can do is copy the Simulcrum with Urza and put more plus one counters on the Surge Engine. Doesn't really speed up our clock unless they start attacking with lifelinkers. All right, let's see what they got. They swing with the lifelinkers. Just you. I think we block like this. They're not showing us, they need double a ganja to pick it off. It'll be a little sad if they do, but maybe it's not the end of the world. Okay, let's try it. Successful block. They get the life, they get the Shana draw. They make a lot of these tokens. I mean, they might just win next turn. Oh, these things, they have lifelink as well. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Maybe we should not have blocked there. And they take them. Ah, that's probably game right there. There was some window to win there, but, uh... This deck just goes over the top when it curves out okay. I managed to hit all five colors with no problem somehow. So we need to make a 15-15 or whatever, and then get flying on it. But we're probably going to lose this coming turn no matter what. I think the only way out of this... We make a copy of anyone useful? I think we start with a draw. Okay, that's not it. We don't have enough mana to um, make a large double striker. I think that's game, though. I think they just attack all here and probably win. We need somehow to make the Amalgam huge and then also give it flying with the Steel Seraph. But I guess they copy the Magpie here and make a bunch of Magpies and take our entire board. Yeah, I think that's probably game. I think they got us there. Opponent goes first. We do have the Automaton on two, but none of our nice one drops. Soldiers. Okay. Boundary. Start here. Azorius soldiers. Swing for two. Thalia. Doesn't really affect us. I guess we might want um, white on turn three. We'll play this out now. Yeah, I think so. The question is, do we trade? We're on the draw. We're on the defensive. That might pump the entire squad here. Okay, nice. No blocks. We're not forced into a trade. Sentinel. Okay, that's a little bit slow for them. Backup automaton's interesting. We don't have double white for the Seraph, sadly. I 
I don't hate playing the next automaton here. We'll take a lot of damage in the meantime, though, if they go pump squad next turn. All right, we're going to play Simeon here, which is a little more defensive. Okay. We now have a 4 4 ward 2. That's going to be pretty hard for them to deal with. No attacks. They cast Resolute Reinforcements. They're going wide here. But 4 4 ward 2 is hard for them to get through. Brutal Cathar, they need one more land for it. Okay, well, that's interesting. We'll play out land here. Probably drop the automaton. Get the next one growing. Maybe some threshers after that. Eventually we could start attacking with vigilance. No attacks. Alright. So they have a little mini draw engine now. They can look for land, Brutal Cathar, to target the automaton. They don't get it this turn. Okay. We have more land. That's pretty nice. It turns on the Steel Seraph. Yeah, I think if we attack with Lifelink, it's pretty good. They'd have to trade a lot of resources for it. Okay. Let's throw lifelink. And see how they want to block. If they trade everything for it, I think we're okay. And if they chump block and we get the lifelink, I think we're okay as well. Looks like they have backup Thalia. So they don't mind taking the block. They still get the lifelink though. They want a Ganjo, I guess. Too bad. Okay. Nothing we can do about that. That's pretty big. I think we just lay that out. Artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. I think we're again putting lifelink here. I should put lifelink on itself, maybe. Swing for five in the air. All right, there we go. That's pretty big. We have the sixth land. We can play the Steel Seraph. They recruit again. They're probably looking for Brutal Cathars. They get a Zephyr Sentinel. Flash flying. Hit more land here. I think we start with one draw. Okay, we hit the land for a big Seraph next turn. And we can maybe play out the Frontliner here as well. I think we're just swinging here again. With Lifelink. They can flash in the Zephyr to block, I suppose. We can also pay 6 and start uh, copying things. It's kind of interesting. So we could make a 1-1 one, one copy of the Seraph. And then give someone else flying this next turn. They keep digging for answers, though. Let's see if they can hit a Cathar finally. They get a backup Dahlia. That doesn't really do it. Scoop. So I think this next turn, we pay 6, make a copy of the Seraph. And then give... Uh, then we have 3 creatures with flying. I think that would get there. Who goes first? No green, but we can go automaton on two. Swamp Sleeper. Classic. We actually hit the uh, green source for turn one. I'll take it. Okay. Want to immediately use the removal. Maybe the automaton will stick around. And power up the sleeper. Swing for two. Okay. Cool. Drop the automaton. They don't have another cut down. It'll be a little bit expensive for them to remove. Gix. Well, that's a little more awkward. No block, sadly. And they get to draw. Must feel nice. 
Okay. Well. How badly do you want to block this turn? Would we trade everything for the resources? Probably have to. Probably have to. I don't think we're attacking, though. Alright, well, let's see if they have more removal. It needs to be of the Infernal Grasp Persuasion, not the Go for the Throat Persuasion. Now it's shouldered as well. Pretty nice curve for the opponent. They offer us the trade, though. Yeah, I think we take that. We probably have backup kicks, but I still think we take it. And we draw. Here comes Automaton number two. I think we play out the Assembler here as well. Just keep pumping the Automatons. No attacks yet, though. Evolve the Sleeper the second time, now has Death Touch. And over the third time, take the draw. Go for the trade. I think we do actually take this. We can't really afford to have them draw every single turn. So there you go, one automaton down. The Conjure is interesting, it allows us to attack all here. Okay, let's see if they'll give us a trade. They don't. We're not going to block on the way back. Actually, we could block on the way back. We'll do nothing here. And we can always block with the Assembler and a Ganjo on the crackback if they offer that. Misery Shadow, pretty obnoxious. Nature's Underdog. Easty Underdog as well. Okay. Are they going to give us? They don't give us the Sheldred. I think we just eat three here. I think no blocks, eat three. Down to seven. They get the draw. Okay. We're pretty screwed here. That's interesting. I don't think we get to lethal. I don't really have any artifacts unless we see a bank buster. No attacks. And we're pretty close to dead. Even if we make a 15-15, they'd have to have some a really weird turn to lose. It's almost impossible. Flesh Gorger for seven. Nice. Okay, we'll take the power up. Okay, we pump the entire squad. Still not enough. It's probably better to make the 15 15. We just lose on the crack back. Is there any way to do it? I mean, we'll drop Urza here, but, um,. We have Legendary, so it's actually cost one less. I mean, we're just so toast for so many reasons. But if they choose to block here for some reason, it could be okay. Let's see if they're... We can get it with the Vigilance creature, at least. Okay, they eat it all. And here. So close to dead, but technically still alive. Removal there, flashback the Underdog. And that should be game. Because we don't have any legendary creatures, so Ganjo is now more expensive. Alright. Mono black. It's a good deck. On the play with an automaton. Seems reasonable. Hello, they say. Hello, Mirden. Where's our tap land? Okay, get the automaton down. Mardu can't target us yet. Okay. I think we take advantage of that while we can. Drop the Simeon. And hit him with a 4-4. They can use Cut Down or Voltage Surge on the Simeon. Yep, there it is. But they can't target the Automaton yet. Let's we'll see if they go land Infernal Grasp this next turn. Land Takash is welcome. Pretty slow. Let's see, how much can we punish them? Drop another Simeon on them. It's at least mana efficient. Yeah, I think I'm down for that. Swing for seven this turn. 
They didn't punish us last turn with a uh, Infernal Grass, so let's make them have it here. Fourth land. They play out the Aganjo. And spend their full turn casting the Automaton, or the Absence. We hit more land. Could swing with the Simeons for six damage, drop some three. It's not awful, but I don't think we need to do that yet. Maybe instead we go Surge Engine Amalgam. Okay. Okay. We have some unblockable damage now. If we level up the Surge Engine, another land would let us go unblockable with the Simian counters as well. The opponent has a little bit of stuff to deal with now. They do nothing, though. Okay, so let's say they have the Emperor here. That makes Vigilance really good. But if we just flash back the Simeon, and say put the counters on the weakest one, we still hit for seven. They go up two. Or we can just put Vigilance on someone instead. I think I like that a little better. We'll level you up for one blue. And the card I'd most like to have Vigilance is you. Because you're pretty annoying for them to deal with. So Vigilance it is. And we'll see if they Wandering Emperor the uh, Simeon here. Is my guess. Yep, there she is. Exile the Amalgam. Simeon might have been better because... Um, they put Simeon in the graveyard. We can flash it back anyway. Minus, make a blocker. Draw a card. Legion to Ashes. Okay. We still have to deal with a flyer. And we can just flash back the Simeon. So we're looking pretty good. Yeah, good game. We have enough green to do everything. Auto pay. Guess we put it on the flyer, right? It doesn't matter. We can give this flying as well. Um, We prefer them, them to remove this. So we'll put it here. And we'll give you flying. And swing. Block there. Sweet. Getting the job done. On the play, we can keep this. A lot of colorless stuff. Man is not too bad right now. A little frontliner on one action. Mono red. Mono red Kumano. Hey, at least we're on the play, though. Feels a lot better this direction. Okay, drop the automaton. Swing for one. Actually, Gruel Ramp. Make a 2 4. It's a pretty good blocker. We hit the third land drop anyway, though. Play the Simeon. Everyone gets in for free this turn. Put it here. Make a 3 3 and attack with another 3 3. Take one free block and drop down 3 to 16. Transform Kumano. Let's see if they go right into a land Raiju here. Land Beast Caller. Also pretty annoying. And back up Beast Caller. Alright, well, that's our automaton versus their Beast Caller. This isn't a bad trade to take in general. That was going to be exiled. They don't love, but I'm not sure we'll get a better option. Maybe we leave this for now. Down to 17. Frontliner. Could start with a Thresher. Draw a card. Okay. See if we can go land frontliner again. No land. We could attack here with the automaton and the frontliner. Or the automaton and the simian. It's pretty good. Let's try it like that. They can take the counters on the beast caller and trade it somewhere else. I think we're happy to take out any other things that grow. They eat it all. I think we'd like to hit some blue mana so we can just run with the surge engine strategy. Reckless Storm Seeker. Let's see how aggressive they get here. We do have a lot of damage on the crackback in general. They put it on itself. How hard are they going to go here? 
I think we get a free block on the Kumano, right? They don't have enough mana to target it. They'd have to pump it somehow. I, don't, I doubt they do that. Yeah, I think we just take that block. Okay. If they pump the Kumano, we're sad, but it doesn't look like it. Down to seven. They only have one blocker. Now they have Kumano. Drop to six. We hit the blue land. So we can go Surge Engine plus Amalgam this turn. Power up the Automaton. To attack all they block here, take three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or what if we put it here? Then that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not lethal. But they do have to block. And they get a free block somewhere. Let's say that we do it like this. Leave back three blockers for them. I think that's reasonable. And we have the surge engine. As long as we don't die. Okay. Let's try it like this. We take the free block there. They drop to one. And they have four, at least four attackers this turn. If they go Riser, they probably just win. Actually, if they go Riser, they definitely just win. Let's see what that last card is. It's Lightning Strike there. Okay. I don't think they can attack all, though, right? We go double block. Oh, they power up a land and win. Okay, I guess that's it. No? Let's see. Is it lethal or not? Yeah, it looks like it. We go block, block, take six. All right, they got there. This is a little bit weird, but I'm down to try it. Mono on one. Okay. Well, hopefully the Wormlet um, can gain us some life over the course of the game. Stabilize a little bit against Mono Red Aggro. Essic Flame Breather. All right. Interesting. Automaton for turn two. I think we want to get the Wormlets down for life. Is that better than the Automaton? Next turn, go Automaton plus another Wormlet, maybe. I think the life is going to matter a lot this game. Let's try to get as much as we can. Flip the Kumano. Chandra, okay. Ping us down. Yep, I'm basically a professional at saving in a stride by now. Make a mana. See if they have play with fire to boot. That would really suck. And the festivities. Okay. And swing for forward down to eleven. I think we go Wormlet plus Automaton here. And next turn, Wormlet plus something else. I do want to gain the life off these Wormlets. I think it matters. They have a lot of cards off the Chandra, unfortunately. It's not like they just run out of gas here immediately. Fourth land into Mechanized Warfare. It's a lot of damage. At least the Flame Breather resolves first. Two more damage down to nine. Okay, mana gone. Ugh. Down six to three? Probably have to trade here. Okay. More land. Lay out the wormlets. Simeon's not bad. We can almost attack down the um We want to trade with the Flame Breather. Should we put it on the Simeon itself and use it as a blocker? I think I'm okay with that. Gain a little bit of life. I think we start pressuring Chandra when we can. And we can now block the Flame Breather at least. Down to five. Let's bring things up to a simmer. Down to two. Down to zero? Yeah. Okay. Oh well. When it goes first, we got a nice curve here. See if the Wormlet can put in work. Mono White do nothing. Okay, Wormlet on one. It's a probably Automaton on two. Bank Buster. Okay. Well, we're thinking about sweepers, but nothing we can do about that right now. Hit him for two. Third land. They take the draw now. 
don't even pretend. Maybe looking for a one mana removal spell for the Wormlet. But if they do, that's good. That means they don't have the Sweeper. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't do it like that. We can both Siege of the Bankbuster and ramp them. I don't think I love that. I think I'd rather just hit him really hard here. And we'll put the counters on the Automaton because it cannot be targeted this turn with Ward 2. Swing for 7. When it drops to 11, and we'll see if they have the turn 4 Sweeper on time. They don't. It's actually Sarah Paragon. That's kind of interesting. I think we're just playing out Bosiju. I don't think we save it for the Bankbuster. Simeon hits pretty hard here. I think that's probably where we put the counters. Okay. And put the counters here. So now everyone at least trades with the Bankbuster. They have to block. Lethal presented. Yep, crew the Bankbuster. Probably trade with the Wormlet. Trade with the Simeon. I mean, we've, we get that back. I don't know. I don't know if that was the right move. We just cast that back next turn with haste. Lay down arms. We gain the life, though. Okay. Three mana left. What else you got? Farmhand makes a blocker. We still get through for lethal. Doesn't have lifelink yet. They get a land. They play out the land. And that's it. I think that's game. So we swing with a um, AC Simulcrum, and that's all. All right. Unearth. Counters can go anywhere. Nobody has lifelink. We only have two blockers, and swing for lethal. Scoop Rooney. Yeah, I think they forgot about the Smalcrum having haste. Not sure. 